Good morning, people of God, and welcome. Um, now it's time for, as we go into this sacred moment, the, as we approach the sermon. We're going to be speaking for a few minutes, or I'm going to be speaking to you for a few moments on the subject, like a good neighbor. Like a good neighbor. I'm reading this morning from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, 25 through 37. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I invite you to open your Bibles to Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. A story we all know, usually called or entitled in your Bibles, The Good Samaritan. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who was my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest who was going down that road, was going down that road, excuse me, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he gave, he took two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Place is almost 
thrown away. Yeah, some of us think we already know the story. We, we should be the good Samaritan, right? Because first of all, we call him good. I mean, he did the right thing. Put medicine on wounds. He, he put the wounded on the donkey. Even paid for room and board and got ancient instant credit so that the one who had fallen into the hands of robbers would be taken care of. Who is my neighbor? We know the answer, right? Everybody. We get it. I've got stuff to do for people, right? I've got to take clothes to the homeless shelters and send a few dollars overseas for starving children in India, and I'm off the hook, right? Well, not to belittle the efforts of all of us who do the necessary work to care for a hurting world. But I want to challenge us to check an underlying principle embedded in this gospel reading. God in Jesus Christ is not asking us just to do some neighboring. Jesus is asking us to be a neighbor, to allow the actions of justice and mercy to pour out of our hearts of gratitude. Being a neighbor is a lifestyle, not a composite of detached actions here or there. It may seem like semantics to you all for your intelligent people, or like it's just a small distinction. But it's an important one when we consider how to enlarge our way of being in this world. There's something about doing things at times that is detached from the person upon whom our deeds are placed. Many of us have experienced the difference between serving a meal to the homeless and eating a meal with the homeless. God calls us to engagement. See, God is a God of relationship, for even the Trinity illustrates to us that within God is community with God's own self. I think I'm a pretty nice person. Don't you think you're nice people? I like doing nice things for people. But I declare I can do any number of things for you. But if I'm not attempting to be in relationship with you, if I'm not daring to overcome the obstacles of race and ethnicity and class and sexual orientation and experience and histories, then we're just two people passing each other on our, our journey, meeting for a time, but never connecting, never becoming friends, never discovering similarities or common joys. However, if we find ways to reduce those perceived obstacles, so that we can see the humanity in each other, we can transform into being a, a neighbor. When you are something, the actions will come accordingly. To be a neighbor, there is no room for preconceived notions or quick judgments about what we think we know. Check on how Jesus tells the story. The story says a person, just a man, was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. There's a purposeful ambiguity here. For indeed, it doesn't matter what station in life the person was. This was simply a human being in need. We don't even know if the person is in perpetual need. Or if it's a person who's just a victim of circumstances this one day. 